All right, good morning, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started this morning. My name is Kim Hall and I am with UT TSU Extension in Rutherford County. This morning, we're gonna be talking about flexible fencing. When we start talking about fencing, one of the first questions is where is fencing used? I mean, we know the obvious, you know, you're driving down the road and obviously you see livestock that are fenced in or you see somebody with a yard fence or a privacy fence, that type of thing. But where all is fencing used? So fencing is used for numerous different things, whether it be privacy fencing, to fence uh, varmints out of a garden or a flower bed, uh, to do um, makeshift, maybe rotational grazing type systems, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna talk about some different types of fencing as we go through this. Um, and we also wanna talk about why is fencing used? Fencing can be used for aesthetic value uh, to you know, make driveway look prettier or front yard look a little prettier, a boundary marker to where we know what separates us from our neighbor, keep things in such as livestock or keep things out. Uh, and what we're wanting to keep out may depend. You know, we may be wanting to keep livestock in a pasture, but then we may be wanting to also keep livestock out of a garden. And then protection, you know, when we start talking about uh, maybe somebody that raises sheep and goat want to protect them from, from um, anything from being able to get in and harm them, such as predators, or protection for our, gar from our, for our garden uh, from so things such as deer, rabbits, that type of thing. So some items to consider. What is the purpose of our fence? Is the purpose our boundary fence? Is it our kind of main fence line? Is it uh, we're splitting pastures off? Or we want to fence rabbits out of the garden? What is the actual purpose for this fence? Uh, the cost, how much are we wanting to spend on this fence? The longevity, is this a fence that you want there for years and years and years? Or is this a fence that uh, maybe needs to just work for a season or work very, very temporarily? It's, does it need to be portable? Obviously, if we're gonna go concrete post in the ground, uh, we're not gonna be able to move that fence around very easily. So is it something that we need to be able to maybe move it on a daily basis, move it on a yearly basis, monthly, uh, what we need to do in that aspect. The aesthetic value, how it looks, you know, is it something that we want it pretty or we just want it functional or do we want it both? And the resources available, do we already have some uh, wire, some post or that type of stuff available? If we're talking about electrical fencing, do we have electricity or do we need to uh, go with more uh, solar panel type system? So when we start talking about using it in our garden and our landscape, obviously there's usually quite a few things we want to fence out. Do we want to try to put netting up to keep insects out? Are we trying to keep deer out? Maybe we have a maybe we have a dog that just loves to dig in those fresh flower beds, um, or maybe a cat is using uh, the flower beds of the garden as uh, the litter box, and we don't want them doing that anymore. Rabbits getting in, chewing on vegetables, or even the livestock getting in. Uh, so we have multiple different uses within the garden and the landscape. So let's talk about different plant type covers. We have several different options. Of course, these range. I mean, there's more than just what I have pictured here, uh, but we have everything from the, the bell-shaped covers over the specific plant to a netting type system to even the one on uh, the far right where it's actually an enclosed, you can open up kind of that hatch to be able to get in and work with them. Uh, so with our plant covers, we typically want them to be flexible. We can move them around, we can change them, uh, that type of stuff. There's many, many different options, like I said. Uh, it can protect against a wide range of species. You know, if we're using a thin enough netting, we can protect against, diff against different insects. Um, we can protect, depending on how they're built, against animals that dig in. The cost of it, uh, typically these can be very cost effective. Uh, we have the aesthetic value when we go to look at how we want to do these plant covers. Uh, how do we want it to look? Do we just want it functional or do we want something more kind of on the right hand side that has more of an aesthetic value? And total control, you know, is this something that we're expecting these plant covers to be a total complete control or are we just wanting uh, partial control of what we're having the biggest problem with? Deer fencing, when we start talking about deer fencing, deer fencing can be quite costly. Uh, Electric fencing is more effective than putting like a permanent fence in. These fences do need to be eight to 10 foot tall. We need to remember that deer have a pretty uh, high range that they can jump. 
Uh, we can do these out of temporary wire, uh, plastic and uh, temporary wire to put up around the garden, garden, or plastic enclosures can offer some plant protection as well, as far as plastic enclosures kind of around the plant that still allows them to get the sunlight that they need to get. Bowls, we're talking about trying to protect our garden from bowls and our plants from bowls getting in and eating the, and tearing up the root system. We want to do a mesh of a quarter inch or smaller. That needs to be a minimum of 12 inches high and standalone or attached. So we can either have it standalone around the plant or we can have it attached around like a, a garden or a bed, something like that. We do need to bury that bottom six to 10 inches to help prevent them from digging under that wire. So remember 12 inches high, bury the bottom six to 10 inches. Groundhogs, of course, are a little bit of a bigger animal. We want a minimum of three foot high to protect from groundhogs. Heavy poultry wire or two inch mesh woven wire is the two types of wire that are recommended. We want the top 15 inches bent outwards at a 45 degree angle. We're gonna bury the lower 10 to 12 inches or bend the lower edge in an L shape and bury it one to two inches, okay? So this is something where we're gonna have part of that three foot above ground, part of that three foot below the ground or um, made into that L shape and buried, you know, only a couple inches there. Um, electric fence can also be used. We want to put that electric fence about four to five inches off the ground to where it's at the level where the groundhog is going to touch it. Rabbits, when we start talking about fencing rabbits out, we want a minimum of two foot to three foot high fence. Rabbits can jump. A uh, chicken wire or a one inch opening, so like one by one inch square wiring will work as well. We want to bury that three to six inches and we want to bend that bottom uh, end at 90 degrees. So when we, when we bury that, we want the bottom at that 90 degree angle. That's going to prevent when they try to dig under it, they're going to hit that 90 degree angle and still hit that wire that's under the ground. Chickens. So it's a neat thing with chickens is they can be used to assist in insect control. Uh, kind of a new thing that you're seeing a lot if you uh, use Pinterest or something like that or chicken tunnels. Uh, those, those chicken tunnels uh, kind of go around the garden. You can let the chickens out and they can they go around and scratch the ground, peck the ground, that kind of stuff, um, and, and eat the insects. Now we do need to remember that they can also cause some harm to our ground as far as tearing it up and that type of stuff. And uh, they may be eating good insects that we want, we actually want in our garden also. Some different wire types. There's multiple colors of wire. Uh, you can find wire in just about anything anymore. Um, I actually was looking online last week and found wire in yellow and bright orange and hot pink and lime green. So just about any color you want, you can find. There's many different sizes of wire as far as you can get quarter inch mesh one by one. Uh, we start talking about livestock fencing. We can get a whole wider range of different uh, sizes of wire, also um, different gauges of wire as well. We can get non-coated wire, uh, vinyl wire, mesh wire. Uh, like I said, a lot, a lot of different options there, a lot of different flexible options as well. Different heights and lengths. Uh, you can get you can get all different all different types of heights and lengths. Most of it's pretty easy to cut if you're wanting to make it shorter as well. Post types, we have kind of some options, permanent or e easily removed. We have our wood posts that obviously those are gonna be pretty permanent. We're most likely gonna be concreting those posts in, uh, not gonna be moving them. Uh, we also can do stakes, which, which is pictured in this picture here. Uh, that's a hot wire type stake. You can also use it obviously like they have there to put some wire up also. Um, T posts are another option, T posts are driven into the ground, but they can be removed a little bit easier than what a wooden concreted end post is going to be. Electrical fencing is very portable. Uh, you can move it however you need to. Uh, solar or non-solar, I talked earlier whenever we talked about resources available, do you have electricity already available? Uh, those solar uh, chargers can run electric fence for miles. You know, it just kind of depending on the charger that you get on down to you just get a small one for a small garden. Uh, non-solar 
uh, would be where you actually have to plug that in. Uh, wire or mesh net type, uh, you can get both, both ways. They make tape also that's uh, going to look like a string of almost ribbon type, uh, the, but the mesh, the wire, the tape, uh, they also have rope electric fencing as well. That does control many different pests, uh, especially depending on the type of the wire you use, the height you put it at, uh, that type of deal. And there's, like I said, many, many options on chargers as far as size, how much fence they will run, that type of thing. Choosing the best option. Whenever it comes down to choosing the best option for your fence, uh, there's gonna be different needs for different situations. Obviously, somebody that is fencing in horses or cattle or sheep are gonna have a lot different need than somebody that's fencing out deer or somebody that's fencing in deer or uh, somebody that um, is fencing out rabbits and groundhogs and that type of stuff. So uh, the other thing is, is permanent versus temporary depends on um, your need. Is it something that at the end of the season you wanna be able to pull that fence up and not have it there? Uh, do you want to be able to move it around and, and change the location of it? You need to know your pest, know what you're dealing with, know what the problem is so you know what you're trying to keep out. And remember that you may need to keep out numerous species. So it may be that you need to, you're wanting to keep out uh, rabbits, but you're also wanting to keep out voles. Uh, that's something that, that needs to be considered as well. Some other uses for flexible fencing is not just to keep things in or out. Uh, we can use uh, it for trellis for plants uh, to let like cucumbers and so, uh, stuff like that grow up, uh, used for tomatoes. Uh, poultry wire to prevent digging, buried poultry wire uh, to, to keep uh, dogs from digging, rabbits from digging, uh, tomato cages. Uh, like I said earlier, whenever we were talking about trellises, we could also use those for tomato cages and tree protection to keep those trees from uh, being gnawed on and chewed on. In conclusion, whenever you start getting ready to do these fences, have a plan. Have a plan in mind. Kind of figure out where you want to put your fencing. Um, I just helped a lady last week go out and she was doing some new uh, pastures for horses to do some rotational grazing. We actually went out and just did a little bit of paint marker on the ground uh, just to where she could see it and make sure she liked the way it was going to look before she actually took the time to put the, the actual fence in. So have a plan, uh, know your pest, know what you're trying to keep out or what you're trying to keep in. Um, and there's not necessarily a way of, this is how you have to do it. Uh, it kind of comes down to personal preference. What may work for me may not work for you and vice versa. But most important, importantly, enjoy your garden, enjoy your flowers, enjoy your yard, uh, and just enjoy getting out and enjoying this nice weather we're having. And I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Uh, there's some deer looking, everybody's planting flowers, and if you can't read it, it says, I think I'll start with the tulip bulbs and uh, for an appetizer, and for the main course, hmm, what am I gonna have? So don't let that be you. Enjoy your garden, enjoy your summer. And once again, this is Kim Hall with UTTSU Extension in Rutherford County. Have a good day.